Hey YouTube, Tiger Papa here. I just picked up a uh, 1954, all numbers matching, number 4 Mark II. So this is a post-war Enfield, and I would say that the post-war guns compared to the wartime guns are light years apart. The finish, or the fit on these things is unbelievable. The finish, this one's a little worn, as you can probably tell in the video. It's not perfect, but you can actually see at one point in time, this is a, probably a gorgeous rifle. It's got a five groove bore. Uh, the bore is just about mint condition. Uh, the bolt head's a number two. It's got the, obviously, the nice milled uh, micrometers. This is a, obviously, it's a Fizakerly. Cover up the number a little bit and see how close I can get to you guys. There you go. There's some information right there for you. Now this does not fall into the range of rifles, supposedly this does not fall into the range of rifles that was sent to Ireland, but it goes into the range of rifles that went to Uganda, which is kind of a weird thing. Um, the sling's not the original sling that came with the rifle, I had this one laying around, but it is technically being just a khaki web sling, this is correct for the rifle. The number 9 bayonet matched to this rifle is still at the gun shop, I gotta pick it up still. Um, but I picked it up for the princely sum of $300, which is not bad at all. Now, the number 4 Mark II's were the uh, further advancement of the number 4 series. Basically what they did, instead of hanging the trigger pinned off the trigger guard, they took a big block of steel and they pinned the trigger to that big block of steel that's on the receiver cup. Excuse me. So the number 4 Mark II receivers will be built from the ground up with that uh, block of steel already in there. There's a few other versions. There's the Mark one half and the Mark one third, uh, which have their uh, black steel retrofitted and then the triggers pinned on. But this will be one integral piece. Um, but uh, no, it's a great looking rifle. It's very nice uh, shooter. It's a great shooting gun. I did get some video of the targets. It's on my phone, so I'm gonna try. I gotta try to figure out how to splice that into the video. Uh, I'm using very. Uh, not antiquated, but very not well thought out video capturing technology. So uh, it's basically just a fancy point and shoot camera is what my camera is. So anyway, I was shooting some 150 grain uh, 303 hand loads. I think I actually got the load written down. my books. I know it's a mess on my table right now, so my reloading book is here. Let me see. 6.5 Swedish. I did not write down my 303 hand load, did I? I might have. It just might be earlier in the book. Hold on. 308. No, I didn't. I wrote down everything else, but I didn't write down 303 British. I'll have to write that down. I know what it was. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the powder load was, but it's a 150 grain Hornady SST uh, boat tail, uh, 312 diameter bullet. Basically, the bullets that are set up for the 303 British or the 7.7 by 58 Japanese rifle. <sighs> and uh, PPU cases with uh, Federal primers, uh, large rifles, and it produced a pretty good load. It was a pretty good showing. Uh, it had pretty good recoil. The cases didn't get blown out or nothing. They weren't damaged. Um, you hear a lot of people talking about 303 British and how you can only get a few reloads out of it. If you're careful with your cases and you don't overload the crap out of them, you, 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 these cases will last a few reloadings. They'll last a really long time if all you do is you keep your cases specific to one rifle and you only neck size. But anyway, I'm not getting into a big reloading discussion or debate or anything. I'm just saying, with the hand loads, this rifle did remarkably well. The first four shots could have been kept on a lid this big. This is just one of those little uh, half pint cans of uh, wood stain. And then there was one flyer that went up about here. So it, it opened the group up a little. But it, for what it was at 100 yards, I was very, very happy with the results. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, stick around to watch the shooting and the uh, target of the studio, uh, or of this rifle. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, share, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.
You got your earplugs in? Yep. All right. This thing's spot on. Is it? Yeah, dude. Like, I'm seriously impressed. That's pretty nice. Damn. Is it alright if I shoot that green target in the head? Yeah. Do you have anything with you don't have anything with much modification magnification, do you? I got it over there. You got spotting scope? No. Oh. I got my uh, AR with that uh, three to nine. Okay. Cause this I'm not. I was shooting at steel, and I'm not on steel at all. From when we put the handguard on. Oh, I got that uh, paper target. You can try hitting that. At 25. That's at 50. Or, oh, okay. But that's okay. I'm gonna try shooting that green target guy in the head. Put it right on his chin. Hmm. I don't want to shoot up all my 303 out of one rifle. Here's the group from the number four mark two. So two there, one there, one there, and one here. So man, this would have been a nice group if that little guy ever messed it up.